what does the dictionary say? That's usually where you go to solve problems with, uh, with definitions like this. Um, this is just a screenshot from the Merriam-Webster Dictionary on faith, and it's irritatingly inconsistent. And uh, the definition of faith begins, um, if you guys can see, can you guys see my mouse pointing at things or no? You can? Yep. Okay. So the definition of faith, uh, allegiance or duty to a person or loyalty is the first thing. Fidelity. Fide is the root of Latin. Fide just means trust. And fides is exactly where you'd be looking. And fidelity to one's promises is a little, it's pretty circular. That's just the Latin word. And it's like faith is faith to one's promises. That's a, you, you shouldn't do that. And then uh, down a, a little further right here is where I, I find it kind of frustrating. Um, in 2B, it's a firm belief in something for which there is no proof. Um, that might be true, but I don't know what they mean by proof. And it makes it more interesting when you get right here, when they say the doctrines of a religion and God, belief or trust in God, and then it's like where there's no proof. So let's go a little bit further. Um, this is also on the Merriam-Webster uh, Merriam site. Um, belief, faith, credence, and credit. They're going to talk about these kind of four things within the bracket of the idea of faith. Um, what we're looking at is these definitions in this order. So I want to look at this first. Faith almost always implies certitude, even when there is no evidence or proof. So in the original definition, if you want to go back a couple, it's, it's where there's no proof. And now it's no evidence or proof. And they just keep ratcheting up all the things you don't know in order to have faith on things. And I'm, I'm reading this and I'm just like, that's frustrating, right? So then let's move on to credence. Credence suggests intellectual assent without implying anything about the grounds for assent. And notice here uh, on an unshakable faith in God is the one with no evidence or proof. And then the one with credence is uh, a theory now given credence by scientists. And it's like, oh, okay. So we can get the impression of what the writers thought here. And then we have uh, credit which is, I didn't highlight it all the way, but it may simply assent or grounds other than direct proof. Um, they gave full credit to the statement of a reputable witness. So I would say in conclusion from those texts and from others, I think the biblical sense of faith that maybe if you're going for, if you're looking at the Merriam-Webster dictionary would be credit, the act of trusting in a source, which is tried and true. And that source would be, um, would be uh, probably Holy Scripture in this situation. But if you're talking about the way the writers were writing, Thomas should have known better. Um, the writer of Hebrews was trying to say, because of all of these things that were written that you guys believe in already. And Peter was trying to say that we have, um, we have, ample evidence to believe these things and therefore we ought to. It would be irrational not to.